Uh, Chris, uh, just wondering about blockchain, you know, a lot of promise there because of enhanced security in a lot of ways, but a lot that uh, perhaps the public doesn't understand about blockchain. What, what are your thoughts about where that fits into the puzzle of this? Tony, I would say certainly a great deal of promise going back about five to seven years, but from call it an enterprise security perspective and, and how blockchain can meaningfully uh, improve uh, an organization's security posture, I think a lot remains uh, to be seen in terms of the commercial application of blockchain across uh, many different realms and, and sectors before we can say that blockchain is, is truly a game changer. I think that's still premature. Okay, so we're, we're waiting with bated breath on that, but uh, not the immediate way to slay the dragon on this. Uh, any, uh, do companies need to disclose uh, breaches better? Is that part of what you're arguing? Yeah, I would say um, better is I mean, perhaps even an understatement. Um, at this point, very rarely are companies required to disclose that they've been breached. Um, if there is, if there is um, a leak of personally identifiable information, PII, companies are often required um, in the United States at a state level, and I believe also in Canada, similarly required to disclose that they've been breached. But if there's been attack and an attack and no PII is affected, a company may not be required to tell anyone they've had an attack. Um, and that distorts our understanding of how the scale of the, of the problem, because if we don't know all of the attacks, we may not know how big of a problem we're dealing with, so we may not be appropriately allocating resources to solving the problem. Uh, Chris, what's your perspective on this? Uh, Annie and I and, and uh, Intangic and the FTD teams have, have looked at this very closely. And one of the things that we put forward in the paper is, as Annie said, because there is a lack of, of, of disclosure, what we're left with is really about 10% of the overall picture. So we know uh, from uh, certain companies like Mandiant uh, that a fraction of breaches that actually happen are even detected by a company, let alone disclosed. And so that leaves us with a very limited view on what's actually happening in terms of these sorts of breaches that we occasionally hear about in the media. It's a small sliver of the overall activity, which then, as Danny had pointed out, makes it very difficult from a, from a data perspective uh, to determine what the best solutions are and, and even really first and foremost, how large the problem is, which is partly what we were trying to articulate in that paper. Right. So I guess this brings us to the topic of the, the role of government in all of this as, uh, I guess, a rule maker uh, ultimately on this. Uh, any, any thoughts on the role of government to increase cybersecurity? Absolutely. I mean, at least... There's a, a number of different places the government has a, a role. I would say specifically on the question of um, incident, um, incident reporting, there's a, a role for government. And in the United States, Congress has been looking at what can it require, particularly critical infrastructure operators, um, what can it require them to disclose? So there's a lot of discussion around um, incident reporting. Um, how quickly should companies let the government know that there's been a breach? How can that inform government policy? How can it... Um, better allocate resources, um, just again, a, broad, a better understanding of the problem allows us to have better solutions to, to that problem. Yeah, Chris, uh, do you agree with that analysis? Absolutely. Uh, one of the ideas that we put forward in, in our paper was to update disclosure requirements in a way that reflects uh, risk and reflects where uh, the private sector is actually generating value, and that's from from digital assets, right? If you think about you know the the landmark sort of accounting reform that uh, the United States undertook uh, in the form of Sarbanes Oxley, that was a reflection that our accounting standards were vastly out of date. And if you fast forward twenty odd years today, the the disclosure requirements uh, that are currently in place are not reflective of where the value is actually being created by companies and therein lies the problem because we're, we're then not addressing disclosure around where the risk uh, lies as well. Is there more that government should do other than enforcing disclosure or uh, is that where your head is at right now? Uh, Annie? Sure, um, so there's a number of things. I would say um, disclosure is one piece of it. Better um, standards and requirements is another piece. And um, for regulated industries, the government can say, you are regulated on a number of different pieces, environmental or other quality control. Um, cyber security is one of those things we're going to regulate. So there is a space for government 
um, I would say, in close collaboration with that industry, with those industries, because um, the last thing you want is just sort of mandates from government when those mandates could um, actually make the situation worse if right. the, you know, the interlockers don't sort of understand the scale of the problem and how it's implemented on the ground.